Louder, grittier, hungrier. The anti-capital. Proudly contrarian, effortlessly cool, and unusually confident. Home to Japanese soul food, unbridled creativity, and a people who love to share a joke or a drink with just about anyone, be they old friend or passing tourist. Dense, urban, modern. Welcome to Osaka. Osaka has endured several tumultuous transformations in its long and storied history, many of them rather recently. In the second half of the 20th century, recovering from man-made and natural disasters, the city essentially had a blank canvas to work with. Rebuilding after earthquakes and war, the city elders laid the foundation for a city that would scale elegantly into the future. And that thinking has driven every major project since, from the international airport on an artificial island, to the monorail that connects the domestic airport to the city, to the payment systems that link it all together. Osaka's turbulent past has produced a modern urban hive that hums with admirable efficiency. You can arrive in Osaka by plane, train, bus, boat, and a variety of other vehicles, including chrome segways for Greg. Shut up. <laughs> but I'm guessing that you arrived here on a plane or a train. If it was a plane, you probably landed at Kansai International Airport, which is located on a man-made island in Osaka Bay, about 24 miles southwest of the city. To get to Osaka from Kansai Airport, you can take one of two train operators, depending on where you're going in the city. For Namba, take the Nankai services to Namba Station, which takes between 35 and 45 minutes. Or for Central Osaka, take the JR services to either Shin Osaka Station or Osaka Station, which takes 50 and 70 minutes respectively. All those options will cost between 900 and 1400 yen. Alternatively, you can take the famous limousine buses that will take you to hotels around Osaka Station. That takes about an hour and costs around 1,500 yen. You could also be coming into Osaka Itami, a smaller airport much closer to the city center. Despite only handling domestic flights, it's still one of the busiest airports in Japan. The airport is served by the Osaka monorail, but that system really only serves the northern part of the city, so you need to take the Hankyu line at Yamada Station to get into the center of Osaka itself. Japan's legendary train network means there's a good chance you could be arriving in Osaka like the cool kids do on a train, a bullet train to be precise, or Shinkansen as they're better known as. Shinkansen services arrive at Shin Osaka Station, which is just to the north of the city center. From Shin Osaka, you can connect to the Mitsubishi subway line or the local JR network, and that will get you pretty much anywhere in the city. <laughs> Once you've arrived in Osaka on your trusty mechanical steed of choice, you have plenty of options for getting around this incredible city. But pay attention because there are some intricacies that could trip you up if you don't know about them. Osaka is served by seven different subway and railway companies, which to the uninitiated sounds overwhelming and confusing. But fear not, this being Japan, the whole thing works beautifully. The Osaka subway system is the second largest system in Japan, so it's the obvious choice for getting around the city. If you've been to Tokyo and you've used the subway system there, you'll have no problem with the Osaka system. They are almost identical, right down to the signage and ticketing systems. Fares are based on the distance you're traveling and start around 200 yen. As a complement to the subway lines, there's the JR Osaka Loop Line, which, as the clever name suggests, runs in a loop around Osaka. 
It's not quite as handy as the indispensable JR Yamanote line in Tokyo, but it does the trick getting you around the city and connected to other rail and subway lines. Again, tickets are based on distance and can be purchased from the multilingual machines in every station or using your pay-as-you-go card. So one thing to note about when you're topping up your IC card is the machines are in English, the instructions are in English, you pop it in, but they only take cash, no type of credit cards. Coins are fine, bills are fine, but they only take cash. Because of the fractured nature of the ownership of the various subway and railway lines in Osaka, it is absolutely imperative that you grab an IC or stored value card. Otherwise, technically, every time you change lines, you have to buy a new ticket. Now, the version in Osaka is called the Ikoka, which we just learned means... Shall we go? Adorable. You can pick one up from one of the vending machines in the railway stations or from one of the man kiosks, but if you're coming from another Japanese city, there is a very good chance that the stored value system from that city will work here in Osaka. So for example, if you're coming from Tokyo, your Suica or Pasmo card will work just fine here. You can top it up at the vending machines, you can use it on all the lines, but you need to have one. For those harder to reach spots, taxis in Osaka are a breeze. Now there's no app that we've come across that is particularly useful, so you're gonna have to do it the old fashioned way, but that's fine because they are everywhere. Your fare will be metered, and while a lot of the taxi drivers will speak a little bit of English, it's always a good idea to have your destination written down before you begin your journey. One thing to remember when you're planning your Osaka travel adventures, the stations are absolutely gargantuan. So Umeda Station, which is next to Osaka Station, is the fourth busiest railway terminus on Earth. Not only that, you have a variety of lines and systems converging on each other, subways, local lines, intercity lines, and to make it even more complicated, a lot of the stations kind of bleed into these huge shopping malls and retail outlets. So it's really difficult to figure out where the station begins and where the retail centers end. So don't rock up at the station, assume you can jump right on the train. You're going to need a little bit of buffer between when you get there and when your train leaves. Otherwise, you're going to be scrambling. The fitting reflection of this city's character, contrary to every other city in Japan, when you stand on an escalator, you stand on the right. Properly, like we do in England. The thing around Osaka is helped by the fact that when it was rebuilt in the second half of the 20th century, the grid system was employed. But very few of the streets are named, and those that are named are in Japanese. So Google Maps is your friend, not just for walking directions, but public transport directions. And on the public transport, trust it. It says you have to change lines a bunch of different times, but it will actually mean you just stay on the same train and ownership of the line changes. Trust Google Maps. This city loves food. It always has. Even as far back as the Tokugawa era, centuries ago, while Tokyo was the center of military power and Kyoto was the home of the imperial court, Osaka was the nation's kitchen and has been ever since. Which probably goes a long way to explaining why the city's informal nickname is the city of Kuyodore, which politely translated means eat delicious things until you are pleasantly full. But slightly more accurately translated, it means eat yourself into ruin. Be it the intricate fake food creations found in Senchumai Dogyasuji, or the delicious real food available on every street, Osakans like local food expert Chi are obsessed with and proud of their city's food. They change the dishes depending on the season because they use whatever freshest and seasonal ingredients. Autumn in Osaka means izakayas serve up classic dishes like sardines cooked with pickled plums, slimy mushrooms, duck and mackerel with miso paste, and beautiful fresh wakami or seaweed dishes. Fermented vinegar mackerel. Hi. 
Oh, very nice it is too. It's nice. On then to Odin. Odin is basically a um, hot pot with vegetables simmered in dashi. Usually you have daikon radish. Daikon radish is a white, long yeah, radish. And right now daikon is in season. And you have fish cake called chikua with a hole inside and okura and deep fried tofu with a piece of sticky rice mochi inside. And you also have boiled eggs and another type of deep fried tofu. And the best, as we were about to discover, was yet to come. Gyusuji is beef mussels, simmered many hours until it becomes tender. So this is the beef mussel and cooked with daikon radish again, with burdock, also with konnyaku. Konnyaku is the slimy and chewy um, potato starch. Dishes prepared with beef mussels is local to Osaka. Oh, delicious. Food and drink is what brings Osakans together. And after a long day at the office, our newfound friends in the booth next to us were more than happy to illustrate this point for us. Come by, chaps. When our man on the ground, Joseph Tame, isn't running around Japan dressed as a Christmas tree, he'll likely be chowing down on some kushikatsu. Join us for this special installment of Joseph Tame Eats. One thing I love about kushikatsu is there's just so many varieties here. We've got 34 to choose from, and they're all very cheap as well. You might want to choose maybe five different varieties. They'll come to you on a tray, each on its own skewer. That's the kushi, and katsu is deep fried meat. Then you can dip it into the sauce. Mm. The ingredients of the sauce were closely guarded secret. When it comes to your second bite, there is a very important rule. No double dipping. Do not stick your skewer back in the pot of sauce. Instead, use your hand and take a cabbage leaf and scoop out some of the sauce, putting it on your plate. Then you can dip your skewer in the sauce on your plate. It reminds me of the rule about when you go to a public bath, you wash yourself before you get into the bath, but maybe some foreign visitors don't realize that and cause quite a stir by um, plunging straight in. It's said that kushikatsu started here in Osaka in about 1929, so if you do come to Osaka, well, you just have to have this on your list of foods to try. The alleys and back streets of Osaka will reward the curious traveler with delicious food and hidden gems. So stow the guidebook, stop searching Instagram, and let curiosity lead you to your next Osaka food discovery. One Osaka dish that you have to have while you're here is okonomiyaki, which loosely described is a Japanese savory pancake, but I really don't think that does it justice. The name comes from okonomi, which means how you like or what you like, and yaki, which means grill. And it's a dish made with a batter from flour, grated Japanese yam, and cabbage as the base. But the how you like it bit means that you can add a bunch of mixture or topping. So we've got, uh, in ours, we've got a shrimp, uh, another shrimp, and what looks like bacon, but is actually uh, pork belly, which is even better. The great thing about Osaka food is it's the closest thing I've found to Asia to, to soul food, and you cannot get more soul foody than these bad boys. And you get to cook it yourself right in front of you. Osaka's food culture reflects the city's endless supply of quirky creativity that often seems to express itself in the most unlikely of mediums. Pair that with an admirable and unabashed flair for self-expression, eccentricity, and conviviality, and you never really feel like an outsider here. And if that means drinking the night away in a bar dedicated to retro Nintendo gaming, well, that's just fine with me. Yeah. 
Well, these aren't exclusive to Osaka. They're 100% the most wonderful Japanese treat. They're a little bit legendary. It's the humble Lawson egg sandwich. These are favorites of just about every celebrity chef in the world, and you can't come to Japan and not eat them. I know it looks like a regular egg sandwich, but there's something, it might be crack, but they put something in it. It's just, I don't know if it's the sweet bread or what, but goddamn. By law in Japan, there has to be a Lawson every 25 feet. So they're very, very, e I made that up, but it, they are very, very easy to find. Glorious, glorious sandwich. We flew from London to Japan on the incomparable ANA, and I took the opportunity to ask one of the in-flight team who often visits Osaka for her tips on what to eat while we're in the city. In Osaka, I love takoyaki. Takoyaki are little butter balls with a little bit of oct octopus inside. Octopus? Yes, it's a fresh and tasty and delicious, and it's very tender. And the way they make it is they make them in front of you with skewers. It's fascinating to look at them making them right there in front of you yes the ones in osaka are the best well i cannot wait to have this so good so good got the sweet barbecue sauce it's like a japanese barbecue sauce then the creamy mayonnaise and the salty fish flakes that were dancing and then the hot fishy but not in a bad way octopus yes that is one of the most satisfying things I've ever had great beer food 100% the best beer food I, I've ever had actually for you and you and me me no you and you yeah has a fearsome reputation as an expensive country, but the prevailing weakness in the yen recently has made that reputation less and less accurate. And the further you move away from Tokyo, even in a big city like Osaka, the cheaper it gets. If you're looking in the right places, not eating in your hotel, you'll find eating, drinking, and getting around in Osaka very reasonable indeed. Here's a neat thing about Osaka and Japan in general. Neat in that it makes my life way easier because I don't have to talk about a subject which is just awful. Tipping. It's not done here. In fact, tipping in Japan is considered incredibly rude and should not be done ever. So you're off the hook, people. We can move on. We can go get a drink and raise a glass to this wonderful city. It is baffling to me that Osaka is so often overlooked by visitors to Japan. Inexorably drawn in by Tokyo's overwhelming gravitational pull, tourists check the Japanese megacity box and float towards the contrasting calmness of Kyoto, not even giving Osaka a second glance. But if you do that, you're missing out, big time. This is Japan's Chicago. It's Manchester, it's Marseille, tough, urban, sprawling, iconic, always hungry, endlessly creative, utterly unmissable. I love Tokyo, but that doesn't mean I can't also love Osaka just as much.